Hello, hello, yes. Hello, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Hanif, and welcome to the today's seminar. Today we have a guest from Pulse Lab Jakarta, Dr. Lee Jong Um and he's going to give you a presentation about an overview of Pulse Lab Jakarta. I welcome Dr. Lee Rufan. I can speak more than 24 hours if you want. <laughs> yeah, let's try to make 30 minutes. Um, all right, thanks. <laughs> okay, um, should I use a microphone or is it okay? Microphone is better. Yeah. Ah. Uh, all right. Thank you. Um, thank you for inviting me um, with really, really short notice. Um, I really appreciate you and you and the attendees um, for this presentation. So I, um, my name is Jonggun. Um, I, I think you are the most um, the, the the you are the person who exactly pronounced my names in Indonesia. Thank you. So my name is Jonggun. Um, the I'm the data scientist and research leader at Pulse of Jakarta, um, which is the one of the the research lab of United Nations Global Pulse, um, which is um, a special program of UN Secretary General's um, on big data and data innovations. So I'm I'm working here since August 2013. So it is getting two years now. So I I have maybe more around how many pages I forgot maybe it's 50, but. I think I can't finish um, within the 45 minutes. So the title is Driving Big Data for, um, usually I, I work around, so sorry for someone to take my picture. Um, as the, the Driving a Big Data Revolution for Global Development and Humanitarian Actions. Um, you can identify three keywords from these titles. Um, one is big data. So we are a research lab um, the, which is conducting um, some researches with big data. So big data is important keywords for us. Second one is global developments. Um, the third keyword is, is humanitarian action. So we are working on um, several sectors, um, including food security, urban, real, urban dynamics, or the public health, etc. So all about the global developments. And also we are working on some issues um, related to humanitarian actions. For instance, the, the latest um, the earthquake in Nepal. So we are supporting the World Food Program to understand the <coughs> patterns in Nepal, or um, we are analyzing some tweets to understand the people's conversation in Sinabung in, in Indonesia, something like that. So I hope I show some um, examples of the um, the, the research we are doing. Um, so first of all, um, yes, everybody knows what, what this means, right? So this is the, uh, a map of Jakarta, but you can see some heat maps or the, the reds and uh, yellow or whites. Um, this map shows um, the number of tweets which mentioning chickens or I am in Jakarta areas. So we collected the tweets um, uh, which mentioning the, the IAM um, with GPS location. That's why we can map exactly the location of the tweets on the map. But um, but then um, the yes the there are many applications or there are many uses of this kind of information right so we can first of all we can track those kind of the trends continuously but depending on the angles or depending on the themes we wanted to look at um, some people might use okay so they currently um, so for instance the central Jakarta uh, has more demands than um, other areas um, south or north or east. Um, the other areas, um, the demands of chicken, maybe, or some people can use this kind of information for understanding the sex industries in Jakarta areas. Because yes, m maybe some people um, refers the sex workers as I am. So, um, the this kind of information is kind kind of continuous information, right? So, um, yes. So it shows um, we we collected um, some the. Um, Foursquare, um, sorry, Foursquare data sets um, from Twitter. So, and then we put it. You know, the, you can see that the, the heat maps over 
I think this is about for a month. So you can identify some areas in central Jakarta and piers and the airports and some areas in Tangerang. There are some hotspots, right? Many, where many people check in. So it can be some Grand Indonesia, it can be Plaza Indonesia, it can be either um, the airport or any other information. But what is the information we can get out of this real-time information is, um, okay, so we, first of all, we can understand um, where people check in at this moment, um, but by having the continuous information, the governments or any other organization can understand what are the currently um, happening hotspots, where the development is happening at certain areas. Sometimes, you know, so Indonesia is quite large, right? So from the east until the, uh, no, from the west until the uh, east, um, the, until the end of Papua, it usually takes um, about nine hours by flight. And you have three different time zones. You have, you, you, the Indonesia is really, really big country. Then how the central government or how some organization can understand the current status of the development or humanitarian actions using some different kind of information. That's what we are doing to do with the big data. So go back a little bit. Um, you know, the, the government or the policymakers in public sectors um, rely on um, official statistics or any other different kind of information usually taking, um, taken by some survey or a site visiting. So this, is, this is obvious. We still need that information. But the thing is, the process or the time to get those kind of information takes really, really long time. Sometimes in African countries, they don't have the latest census for the past 30 years. Because of some financial reasons or because of some political reasons, there was some war, they could not make it in any case, but they need some data set, but they don't have. Well, actually, the policymakers need some kind of the evidence, right? So many people say evidence-based policymaking, evidence-based decision-making, but if they don't have the data set, they, how they can do that? They cannot still, um, they cannot make a decisions without any data set or without the evidence. But, um, but, you know, the census or some, the survey take a lot of time and take a lot of money. That's why um, many countries in the world are um, only taking the census every 10 years. S only few advanced countries um, can do the census every five years. Uh, for instance, Australia, using some technologies. They are using mobile, they are using um, the iPad or a tablet. Using that, they can do but usually on other countries doing the census every 10 years, right? Because census is based on individual survey. So you need to ask, or the government need to ask some questions to every individual, and then need to collect that information, and then compile, and then need to check the quality, and then publish it. Others, um, the, the Bodes, um, every three years, or the Susanas, there are many, many different kind of the surveys, but nothing every month or nothing three months. When they need it, they are doing some additional ad hoc survey or some sample survey to complements to, um, to introduce additional information, but usually the cycle is several years. But then, um, looking at the Indonesian one, right? So um, one of the organizations um, which, which are which funded by the Gates Foundation and UN, so they, they surveyed, uh, they actually, they, um, they they, they collected um, the latest information about the health, latest information about education, and then they tried to find some, what is the information gap? So let's say we, we need some decision making at this moment about the education, then what is the latest information related to education um, in Indonesia or any other country? It shows the information gap. You know, the, Indonesia is not the worst case. Um, there are many, many other worst cases, but still in Indonesia, you can, you can have the latest information about the water is about already 10 years ago. So then, how they can make it, right? So most of the information used by the policymaking is a kind of the stat snapshot of information or static information, which captured several years ago, five years ago, or 10 years ago, worst case. But at this moment, in a, oh, Oh, I should have another um, the animation there, but the, the information we need at this moment is more real-time information or time information or recently collected information. Based on that, we can improve the decision-making process. But looking at the private sectors, you know, the 
Facebook has a lot of data scientists, and the Google has a lot of software engineers, researchers. They are doing a lot of things using their data sets. They have a lot of information. They are using that information for many different purposes. Sometimes they want to make the client happy, or they want to make some businesses, but they are doing something. They are making some advanced technologies. They are doing great things about the researchers, even in eBay or any other places they are doing. Facebook, um, they have a lot of data scientists, data engineers. They have a lot of information. Even the Facebook are interested in analyzing some public um, sector questions. For instance, what really people talk about when they lose their job? Or um, when the earthquake happens, uh, for instance, in San Francisco last August, what people talk about? Or what is the correlation between the distance between the origin and the peoples and the number of the contents published by the f Facebook users? So they are looking at those kind of information, right? Um, Oh, here's. So, yes. The, the information we wanted to use at this moment in a current um, advanced technologies world or hyper connected world is not the snapshot of the information captured several years ago, but probably we need more um, real time continuously introduced information using some technologies. So, Global Pulse um, started 2012, um, the, uh, 2010, um, after the world economy crisis in, started in the US. So at a time, the Secretary General um, wanted to help the people um, in developing countries. So they, they looked on the data sets, but they realized that um, they don't have really the data sets, right? There were some political issues, there were some other issues, but investigating the existing standard methods using the survey is not efficient. You know, not efficient, um, I cannot say efficient, but it was hard. So. They were thinking different ones, right? So private sectors use a lot of information collected in their data warehouse or some Hadoop. But then they were thinking, okay, so if if we can't find any connection between their data set and development issues, their data set and humanitarian actions, we can make some partnership with the private sectors and then we are doing great things with whole private sector. That's why Global Post started 2010. Um, and then we, we, we have, we are doing two tracks. I so, said, okay, so we want to do um, the big data research. Um, in collaboration with academia, in collaboration with public sectors, in collaboration with private sectors, we are doing the research together and then wanted to publish something and then wanted to, not change, but uh, wanted to do great things for, for the people, so for protecting the vulnerable peoples. At the same time, we are doing some um, we are we are doing some things to make the ecosystem better. You know, in developing country, the regulation is not ready, or not many people understand big data, or not many people don't know what they can do with big data. So in this case, we are doing some um, the capacity buildings. We are organizing some workshops. Sometimes we are organizing the hackathon, or we are meeting some um, the the Kemenkes regulation peoples, and then say to them, okay, this is the happening. This is the current worldwide regulation about the privacy. You need to consider. We cannot insist the governments to adopt um, other regulation, but still we can recommend or we can introduce some other regulations um, in in U.S. or in Europe, and then we can say them this is Europe regulation you can consider. So we are doing globally two things. Um, um, so um, there, uh, there are a lot of big data sets, right? Big data, quite the ambiguous and the vague terms um, which can refer anything um, in private sector. Some people just say that, okay, 100 um, gigabytes is big data or not? Or right, they, they, they frequently ask that question. I have a lot of big size of the Excel file. Is that big data or not? Well, um, even, um, even I, as, as far as I remember, 10 years ago, I processed one terabyte of data sets. At this time, it's, it's, it's huge data sets. I, I need to take one or two days only process something. But, but now, one terabyte is not anymore some huge data set, right? So my, my laptop also has tens of terabytes. Now, the, the petabytes or more than that, we usually refer to big data. But still, um, there are, although there are many types of big data, but as far as we see, um, some interesting data sets um, or interesting big data sets um, which can be useful for the governments or UN or the public sectors or just simply saying, not simply, but importantly saying to protect the vulnerable people are those kind of things. For instance, social media or um, what else? 
online advertisement, complaint system, or video is mostly about what people talk about. So the public sector is wanting to know what people really talk about, what people concerns, what people need, what people really want to have. Or um, in, on the other side, um, we are calling it behavior information. You know, the, um, the many countries are using people's uh, prepaid phone, right? It's a pool sign in Indonesia. So they are top up and they are recharging their phone. And then they are, when they finish or before even the finish date, they, they are top up again, they pull out again. There are, there are some study about um, the correlation between the pulsar behavior, the recharging behavior, and economic situations, right? Some rich people just top up $100, and then they, they are using, they are making the phone calls. After that, even before they finish the $100, they are just to top up another $200, rich people, or even they are using the postpaid phone. But some poor people in some the poor countries, they are just top up um, the 10 cents in US dollar. Even there is a, the, the type of brokers, um, because um, usually um, you are using the scratch card or as, um, I'm using also the pulsa. Um, the, you are, some people are using scratch card, right? So they are visiting the convenience store and they are, they are buying the type of card. But um, the minimum is usually um, at least maybe one dollar, I don't know. I forgot, so two, 2,000 rupiah. Um, but um, sometimes some people cannot even afford that. So they, there is a broker and they are visiting there and they are just um, top up 10 cents or 5 cents. Those kind of behavior shows some economic indicators as well. So um, there are many, um, many usability of this kind of the data sets. Maybe you can use new insights, right? Using some existing survey data sets, surveying methodologies, you cannot know um, the behavior changes every day or every week or every month because um, uh, unless the survey is done within a day or within a week, right? So probably you can get some insights, you can save your time, you can save your money, or um, by having some kind of the real-time information, you can react more rapidly and you can improve your um, decision-making process. So the positive Jakarta is a kind of the, um, the collaboration environment. We are doing the research. Um, well, actually, my I, I've done um, my master's, um, some, you know, the data classifications, my, my, my PhD, social media analysis, my postdoc is um, the communication behavior analysis, user modeling, and then I, I, my, my full career is about data analysis, data mining, and statistical modeling. But I don't know the exact problems in food security. I don't know. I don't much about know about the public sector's information, right? So we need to work with the government and UNs. Where the experts are, they know the real problems on the ground. We actually, computer science point of view, I'm 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 trying to, to apply some advanced technology to help their problems, but the problem is there. The problem is the UN knows some problems, government knows some problems, or NGOs or local communities even knows their problems on the ground. And importantly, we are working with the private sectors, um, where, which have the data sets, big data, and importantly, we are working with academia or research centers where expertise are. So we try to put all together, um, someone who knows the problem, someone who can help the problem, someone who can support the problem using some data or experts. So we are facilitating, we are doing the research together, and then we are publishing the research paper, and then we are making some open source library Afterwards, um, the governments or the UN can use that library because we wanted to have some sustainability. We are not the consulting company. We just step in or we are doing some research and then publishing the, the tons of reports and then left. We, are not, we don't want it to be like that. Um, are you working with a consulting company? Why, why are you laughing? <laughs> so um, this is one of the research projects we've done um, maybe it's, um, in the beginning of our the Pulse of New York. So um, some of you knows about the Millennium Development Goals, um, the, which started from 2000. Um, the, you know, the, there are the 193 countries in, um, in the UN system, and they, they discuss a lot what are the eight different important goals uh, to, to the, the, the world better. So they, choose, they chose eight different goals. We, we call this Millennium Development Goals, eight or eight Millennium Development Goals. So what the first, the MDG is um, property reductions. The second is education. Third is, um, third is five is AIDS or maternal mortality is four, something like that. But importantly, the MDG is finishing 2015. So this is a 15 years program. 
So now the UN and the 193 countries are preparing the next goals, which is called Sustainable Development Goal, SDGs. Actually, at the time, we, they, they just called post-2015, so after 2015, another goal. Now it, it, is, it is settled down the name with SDG. There are 17 different goals, a um, little bit expansion of the MDGs, but, but you know, um, the different countries has different priorities. Sometimes Indonesia has number one priorities in infrastructure now, um, thanks to the President Jokowi. But previously, uh, the, maybe the, the priority is different, right? So maybe poverty reduction was number one, but or something. Or even those kind of the priorities changed over time, maybe every year or every three years, based on the midterm Indonesian development goal or the long term. So, um, so we wanted to monitor um, how people think about how people prioritize their goals. Not really goals, but what they really talk about in the tweeters, right? So we put in some, um, for instance, education and water sanitation, or climate change, or nutrition, or the, the honest of government, different kind of the sectors. And then we are developing, we, we were developing the keywords, um, about 100,000 of the keywords uh, using five different languages. And then we are monitoring the around the world to see that, um, you know, so here's for instance, if you see the honest of the government, then um, the number one is, I cannot see that, but Peru is number four. So clicking the country, you can see what people really talk about. Different priorities, but this, it changed over time. Because sometimes um, there, there is a, some education issues, they really talk about the education, right? Or sometimes some raskin issues, people talk about really the raskin. Something like this, we wanted to monitor those kind of things. Or um, specifically about the health, uh, we, we did a quick research with the UNICEF and um, uh, no, Kemenkes, um, the Minister of Health in Indonesia, to see that um, what people really talk about the health in, in, in Twitter. You know, they, they, they are talking about side effects, um, they are talking about halal and haram, or they are talking about other, the new vaccines, or the, some tips, um, something like that. But the thing is, the um, Kemenkes um, even monitors the tweets to understand the dialogues of the peoples, but manually, they are reading some tweets. They, they, they trigger some the keywords, and then they are reading. But rather than that, so probably the automatic ways might help the Kemenkes or the officials better. For instance, here's, we, we put some the side effect or some symptoms considered as side effects. You know, the health and the death is not the side effect of vaccine, but people consider. Sometimes a baby death and, you know, the a vaccine cover is suddenly down. And then uh, followed be because of death, some babies are dead, unfortunately. So by monitoring those kind of the keywords automatically, you can monitor the conversation of the peoples or Let's say we are we are monitoring the the death, you know, the the death or its synonyms and key um, in the tweets related to vaccine or immune or immune system or similar the those contexts, and then we we learn that okay one day, suddenly people talk about death, um, relating to the, the vaccine, then one way, um, one way to, <coughs> one way the governments can take is, you know, currently. If some misinformation is propagated um, to the citizens, then usually um, the governments make some, you know, the press, right? Or they are they are using some newspaper or they are using some the television shows to to say them. There is no relation between the MMR and the vaccine or some certain vaccine and the death. But it's probably, you know, many people use the Twitter. And Twitter has a good functionality to propagate, um, to disseminate some information using retweet, right? So this is the real retweet of the side effects in Indonesia, uh, using some keywords we were using. Then we can realize, okay, several doctors are the central point of those kind of this, this, um, the discussions. The, 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 the network of the two nodes mean that, okay, so once this guy, Dr. P. Prim is quite famous, right? He was graduate in UI. Um, so Dr. P. Prim um, uh, tweets something, then his, um, his, the followers receive his information. So in this case, we can use that network for disseminate the right information about the death and the vaccines. So this is another way, right? Or 
Um, this is um, some analysis about the hate. I'm sorry. Um, the, unfortunately, um, the Kalimantan and Rio, there are a lot of um, illegal logging or illegal forest fires. Haze is one of the problems, and haze is one of problems um, of politically with the Singapore and Malaysia, right? So when those areas, there are some the, the fires, haze goes to Malaysia and haze goes to Singapore. And then the Singapore, Singaporean government, uh, they complain a lot about those illegal things. How we can how we can help the governments? You know, the currently the, the monitoring the natural fires or the mountain fire is done by the satellite imagery. So the governments are having some satellite imagery, not really really real time, but at least they are having or some other NGOs are having the satellite imagery every day or every two day. I, I forgot more than every day, and then they are analyzing to find out hotspots. You know, hotspot is not really the place with fire. But potentially, there are some false positive and some real fire there because they are analyzing the imagery and then they determine this is hotspot. So sometimes this is real fire or sometimes um, some, some areas with high potential or sometimes really not. So then um, what we can imagine is, you know, when people see some haze over there, then maybe they are treating and even there are some reporters are treating, okay, so there are the, around these areas, um, we can observe some fire or not. This is another way we can use the Twitter, and um, this is the I forgot. Um, yeah, this is a quick feasible study with Papanas, um, the National Minister of Development Planning. Um, they they wanted to know the demands of some commodities. You know, they um, they, they they can they can. Uh, track a little bit, not fully, I cannot say fully, but they can track the supply chains. You know, so they can track, um, they can work with some um, the suppliers, so they can track the supplier. But the one factor which affect the price is also demands. You know, there are some seasonal demands. Ramadan is coming in two weeks, next next week, right? Um, the Ramadan is coming, so usually the governments um, say that, um, okay, so around the Ramadan or at the end of Ramadan within a month's time, there will be a lot of demand, so they can imagine a little bit of um, the price increase. But the thing is, um, the demand is not always the same. Maybe it's if affected by the number of population or number of distribution of the um, population or any other factors, right? So we, we try to find an alternative way, uh, or it's even not an alternative, because um, there's nothing in the government system which can track the demands of the commodities. So we try to find a way that um, which can produce some demands. So one way is, yes, it cannot be exactly um, accurate, but just the tracking or understanding some commodities, the number of tweets mentioning some commodities, let's say chabe, chili, right? So um, still we can understand, okay, suddenly, um, suddenly these areas, they are mentioning some the chabe, or even um, the December, not December, so beginning of this year, there was um, some in price increase about the uh, barrels rice, right? Because of the weather, or some others, um, some trading issues, and then we observed that some areas which has a lot of the rice production fields, and also some demanding areas, they are talking really about the price and the increase of the price. This is some um, the quick sentiment analysis about the fuel subsidy cost, which was uh, executed in November 2014. You know, a lot of state budget um, spent for the fuel subsidy in Indonesia. And the president decided to cut, right? And then the budget can be allocated to other infrastructure, education, etc. But still, um, the government wanted to know the sentiment flows or sentiment changes because of some the the policy changes. Last year, uh, there was a several there were several policy reforms related to electricity, gas, and fuels. Suddenly happens within years. Everything happens last year. But then they wanted to know what is the affected industry? What people really concerns? Are they are they affordable or cannot? That's really important things, right? If after this fuel subsidy cuts, some industry really, really affected, then the governments can allocate another subsidy only for the industry. This is one way, right? So cut the generalized um, policy 
and then they are investigating some of the money specifically which was affected by some the general policy. So for in that sense, it can be some um, good things. Another research we've done last year is uh, last um, the now casting commodity prices in Indonesia. You know, now casting is not really predictions. Now casting is now casting. So currently telling. So what is the current price of the, some commodities in Indonesia? So for that, we studied um, the four commodities in Indonesia: um, daging sapi, daging ayam, cabe, peras. No, bawa. Four. So we studied four um, commodities, and then we collected tweets. But when we collected tweets, we used some some filters, and we we used regular expressions. Okay, so um, for instance, ayam should be there, and then because we wanted to track the price, some number should be there, and the IDR or Ribu or um, the Rupiah or RP. So we made some um, combination of the regular expressions to extract the numbers, and then we collect for one and a half years of the, those tweets. But then um, the tweets, just the um, averaging tweet is not enough because you know the sometimes there are some unity issues. Some people talking about the price per kilo, but sometimes people talking about per gram or not really gram, but 100 grams, something like that, right? We need to develop some filters. So then, how we can do? We started um, from a simple um, assumption. Okay, so today's price uh, can be inferable. Um, yesterday price plus the price information measured or um, extracted from tweets. Assuming when price up, people complaining some prices, right? So, oh my gosh, the price of the chickens increased today, X, Y, Z, rupee. Or, um, so the, the price was increased and the chili price was increased today. I visit the market and the price is X, Y, Z, rupee. So we wanted to track those kind of informations and then we apply some statistical filters. This is really simple. And then so we are waiting some um, the number of tweets. So, for instance, we are assuming if more tweet, then more uh, credibility. And then with some boundary information, and if the the price is um, the outside the boundary, then we remove. And then we wait based on some distance, and so we are waiting uh, waiting um, based on the number of tweets per day. And interestingly, it shows. It shows um, the with the four commodities, the, the correlation quite good, and still we can track quite uh, interestingly the trends and information over one and a half years. So starting from 2012 June, we 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 put the data information extracted from the Ministry of the Trade, which was represented for um, by the blue color, and then no red color, red colors, and then we are calculating the the model price um, based on that questions. And we were, um, you know, unfortunately, there are more than 150 active volcanoes in Indonesia, and still many people use the tweets. Um, you know, the by NGOs, by the BNPB, or by BPBD, or by the local communities, they are using the tweets because they they, they need to disseminate some information and they need to get some information from the Twitter. So we were collecting some tweets um, when the Sinabung um, erupted last year, maybe as far as we remember, the early last years. And then we, we collect the tweet and break down the conversation by topic. So for instance, some, some people are really concerned about the young people's mental health, or some people's disseminating some situational information. For instance, where the refugee is, where the food is available, where what is available. Even they are talking some demands about demand of the volcano eruptions. And we are, we are working with NTB governments, um, the, the, to test the big data and the data innovation. So one of the parts, um, we are doing some other data innovation stuff, but one of the data analytics part is we're trying to supporting the decision making in local governments. For instance, here so we are testing with NTB. So there are several types of information we can use, right? So for instance, um, LAPOR. LAPOR is the national complement system developed by UKP4. And, and then now it is managed by the KSP, um, the, the president's staff office. So they are collecting some the um, complaints information. You can you can um, send the SMS um, to the Lapor system complaining um, the road of infra um, in front of the UI was broken. So then um, the corresponding the ministry or corresponding governments will fix it. Maybe it's the Depok um, governments will take care of it. They are they are cleaning. And the KSP um, the um, the president step office st president step office um, following that's the track. So that's the Lapor. 
And another is many local governments are maintaining their own SMS gateway. So maybe uh, it's like um, some people who living in uh, who who are living in uh, Jakarta, they can send some SMS to a home, right? Similarly, um, you can you can do some the similar complaining system in NTB, or some even some communities has maintaining some um, the websites and then they are receiving some complaints. Kampung is one of the the Kampung Media that. ID, something like that. So that's, that's some other things. But then we have some passive information. One of the interesting things is here's, this is a kind of active information. People are actively reporting. So this is almost one, of, not almost, the 50, uh, you know, I, I heard um, many of the, lapor, um, the complaints are rubbish. For instance, some people are watching television, and then when and the, his preference team lost, then they are complaining Lapor. So the, so many of the, the Lapor messages still rubbish, but most of them are quite important things. Um, the government need to follow. This is quite actively people are complaining, but the Twitter, so you can see that you didn't ask, or no governments ask. Some, some governments ask, um, the, to, to contribute the complaints using the tweets. For instance, the Bandung, Bandung mayor, um, the Gamil, he is asking the citizens to use the tweets, um, tweeters to comp to send their complaints to the Bandung. But usually people, um, the governments do not ask um, the people's, could you complain educations in your system? Why is it tweets, right? Just people do it. So that's why I put here is the passive one. But then, but then, you know, actually, less than 100% is really, really related to the development and human turn. But, but still, we can find quite interesting information from there. So this, um, the, here is the, the, R, um, the 431. So um, eight different priorities. This is Jokowi's um, priority 431. So um, we can identify some interesting information from even Twitters, you know. So the, the first, um, first of the four is one of the food security or food sufficiency. We can develop some taxonomy or we can develop some keywords or whatever methods. If we have some proper keywords, then we can track what is the dynamics of the people's conversation or we can break down of those, um, this is the same thing, the Jokowi's 431s. So we can break down those kind of things for the first level of 431, but still we can break down a little bit more than that, right? So also, using some the distribution or geographical distribution of the trees, we can find interesting things. This is NTB and this is um, um, Lombok Island, this is Sumbawa. You know, um, you can see that the distribution of the tweets in Lombok quite largely distributed, but here you only see that the tweets follow this way. The reason is there, because Sumbawa is poorly developed, and then um, the telecommunication infrastructure is almost only available following that the, the main road of Sumbawa Island. You know, many the peoples in Sumbawa are complaining about the infrastructure. They are complaining. I, I wanted to have some infrastructure here. I know it's, that there are some mountains there, but still they need. People are living, they need some infrastructures, they are complaining, but even in different way, we can convince or we can find some interesting information from the analysis of the tweet. You know, some policymakers need some evidence. They, they wanted to see. They wanted to see the complaint or they wanted to see other visualizations, which is an evidence of uh, policymaking. Let's talk about other things. Um, this is about the mobile data set. Um, and I think this is our friend's work. This is re uh, related to what I talked in the beginning about the Pulsar, right? So there are different kinds of the people. Some people only can charge one, let's say just $1. $1, $1, $1. But some people can uh, top up by 10, or some people can charge $50. So, you know, we, we are, we are having those kind of data sets, and we are, we are not interested in individual. We just need some aggregate levels, okay? So district or some, um, the, well, the Kuzamatan or Kabupatan, we only aggregate information. Aggregate number of the rupiah for Taba per day is how much? So this is a kind of those map. This is the heat map, the, the average purchase, average, and then it shows that. To get, to produce, um, to produce the, the socioeconomic levels in Indonesia, usually the governments use uh, Susana. Susana is one of the survey information 
which have some expenditures and which have some money information there. But then, um, by using those kind of information, we can do similar things. And, and the pulsar or type of visibility is your economic power, right? So if you can, if you can buy more pulsar, then this is related to you can eat as, as much as you want. So we, we correlate it between um, the pulsar average and the food consumption statistics. Every three years or more than that, the World Food Program are um, serving the food consumption, um, the statistics with uh, 160 indicators, something like that. We are, here's, um, I, I need to say something important things. We are not replacing the survey. Survey should be theirs, right? As an accurate information. But survey has some limitations. It takes um, some time. It needs some, requires some human resource time. And survey is not a continuous information. But what we're trying to do here is we wanted to complement that information, right? To enhance the policy making process. Okay, so every year, every two years, we have some survey information. Okay, living there. But we will have some more cheap information, less accurate, but it shows more insights or it's, it can be used for amply um, to complement that information. This is something we're trying to do. And mobile data sets is effectively used for um, modeling the outbreak of some diseases. The, we, we are discussing with um, the mobile operators in Africa to modeling um, to models the um, Ebola situations, and we are working. We are talking with the Nepal. But the, even before, there were some proven cases. For instance, um, the the um, the mobile mobility patterns can be used for um, the modeling the malaria or any other infectious diseases. And it, the mobile data set can be used for understanding disaster impact assessment. Okay, for instance, let's say these, these areas, this is Mexico. Um, these areas, um, usually there are a lot of people passing because this is one of the main roads, um, 180D. And this is one of the research we've done last year with the World Food Program. So this is a big, big road. So we expect um, every hour at least more than 200 cars passing by there. But then, to, to address the impact or to understand the impact of the disasters, probably um, we can't we can analyze some CCTV, obviously. But CCTV is not available everywhere. But then, alternative way is we can monitor the communication behaviors in certain cell tower. Then we infer or we can guess, okay, the impact of the flooding here is quite big or not. And um, this is one of the projects we are doing in Kampala in Uganda. Um, there's not many people use social media, but still many people using radio. And there are many, many rural areas, and they are listening every day to the radio. The central governments are um, hard to get what's happening in really rural areas. I think this is similar in Papua, right? The government has quite limited resources. They have not enough the staff or not enough the officials in Papua. So usually the statistics collected in Papua is really poor. I, I'm sorry to say that, but everybody know. So um, in this case, maybe radio is another way we can understand the the, some situation is there, so satellite imagery can be used for understanding the developments. You know, this year, um, the 2013 December, one of the important law in Indonesia was passed, which is the village law, Undang Undang Deja. So through this law, um, the governments will disseminate a lot of the huge amount of the money to village. Before that, there was a program, um, um, I forgot, PMPM. PM. So through that programs, the village has some development money. So they can use that money uh, through the facilitators. There are some facilitators, and then the village heads can use that money for the village development. But thanks to the, the Undang Undang Deja, so from, last, from this year, a lot of money will be disseminated to directly the village heads. They can use that money for their purposes, and then they can fix the hospital. They can fix, they can make the new bridge they can make, they can fix their, the, the schools, whatever they can use. But then the central government, how to track them, right? They, they wanted to measure, they, they wanted to evaluate their programs by, by saying that, okay, thanks to this money, this village was improved. The development state of this village was really good because of the village low money. But then they need to monitor and they need to evaluate those kind of the scheme. Then how to do that, right? 
So there are a lot of the rural areas in Indonesia. One of the ways they can evaluate, they can monitor is satellite imagery or the, the remote sensing data set. Maybe it's the UAV can be used or a satellite imagery can be used. That's one thing we are doing. So actually, um, we are piloting soon um, with the UAV and civilians. And the recently we have, um, uh, no, last year we have an um, MOU with um, the Universal Postal Union. This is one of the oldest um, the UN agencies in the world. So they are managing the postal data sets. So they, are, they have a lot of huge data sets. They have a huge database about the, um, the post between the countries. For instance, how many letters today from Indonesia to China? Something like that. So we made an MOU with the UPU to do a collaboration research, maybe in terms of understanding the economic status. You know, the number of some, the no, number of puzzles or the number of letters, it can be an other proxy indicators which show the economic status or the relation of the countries. So we are testing quite the crazy ideas um, with the different um, data set. Okay, so um, the almost finishing. So I, I think I, I can't finish um, within the 40 minutes fine time. So um, what we are trying to do is we are trying to find some the real-time signals. Uh, some people are asking why the name is Global Pulse. P what is Pulse? Pulse is the, the you know the the heartbeats or something like that. Those kind of pulse. But we wanted to understand the globally the real-time pulse using big data or data analytics. So maybe some people, um, we, hopefully we, we try to understand, for instance, here in Jakarta, their economic crisis happens, or volcano erupted these areas, illegal deforestation, storm is coming, quality of service is good, bad, Papua is still a lot of the malaria cases, right? So we try to get those kind of the real-time signals using different kind of the data set. So um, this is almost last slide. So the the UN UN Secretary General Ban Ki Moon, um, Mr. Ban, um, the quotes uh, stated, um, "Data revolution is really really important now. You know, data revolution can be um, includes um, big data, or it can be some other innovative ways. For instance, we are testing crowdsourcing um, food prices in NTB, or as we we plan to do in NTT soon, because um, you know the digital divide or." In rural areas, not many people are using the social media, but still, so we can use the human powers. I don't know, you, you have read the book um, the, the written by the MIT professor Alex. Um, the, there is a book um, which is called Social Physics. So Social Physics means um, the humans, that a lot of data sets uh, which was not collected for certain development purpose or protecting the vulnerability, but those kind of data sets can be used in, diff in, in here. We are working with Alex, and his book is quite interesting. If you, you have some time, um, I recommend to read it. But data revolution is almost coming, so we can do interesting things. Um, so thank you very much. Wow, that's, I'm really on time. So this is my email address. And if you have many, any other information, you can visit our website. We have a lot of good quality communication specialists. They are maintaining. They are putting all kind of information on there. If you have any question, or if you have, if you wanted some interns, if you wanted to collaborate, feel free to write an email to me. And we are maintaining the tweeters really good. So just following our um, tweeters, UN Global Pulse, Global Pulse, Global Pulse, and um, Pulse Jika and Pulse Like Kampala. Thank you very much. Thank you for the interesting presentation by the, uh, Mr. Lee. Now uh, is the session for discussion. So if anybody would like to ask several questions, may do it now. So it depends. So we cannot really share our data sets. Um, but we can share our data set, um, not fully. So it depends on the MOU we have. Um, the, for instance, the Twitter or, for instance, other the companies, we have some MOU based on the MOUs we, we have, we, we got the data set. 
So as long as I know, um, we can share the data sets if, um, with our collaborators or the research collaborators um, the under some protection. Yeah, still we need to do something. One of easy way we are sharing our data set is, um, for instance, the university researchers are visiting us. So then they are seeing us, or a PhD student visiting us. They are seeing our the infrastructures, and then uh, we are calling, we are making some, for instance, contract, research intern, research fellow, or research fellow, something like that. Then we are protected, so we can do the research easily. Or in a long ways, we are making some university and the UN's, um, the MOUR partnership, then we are protected, but it's, yeah, something like that. Um, yes, this is one of the questions I, I frequently uh, were asked. I, just before I was in Minister of Agriculture, um, they also asked that question. Um, but you know, the, first of all, when we develop the model, um, we are we are calibrating or we are um, the setting the parameters. Everything based on the official statistics, right? So, as as you see here, um, we we've done a study um, for developing. Uh, statistical models for now testing food prices. We were testing one and a half years from 2012 until 2014. And comparing official statistics, and we are calibrating the model um, based on the official statistics, which um, hopefully, which produce the, quali the similar quality with official statistics. This is one way when we um, validate, when we making the statistical model. Secondly, yes, you are right, right? But, um, but importantly, official statistics, what, as I said, we are not e replacing the big data, but we wanted to complement the big data. For instance, official statistics only available this time and this time, but then uh, during that time there's no some evidence. But then we wanted to complement, or we wanted to produce some insights in the team. So then official statistics is still there. So we are not saying the, um, the, the we are not saying the policymakers need to be um, the make the policies only based on big data, but this is complementary information. Yeah. Bahasa is okay, so you can uh, you can use Bahasa or English, mm -hmm. Korean if you can. Um, <laughs> um, no, unfortunately, I just know some few words related to research. The, all the Bahasa I know is. Related to research. Okay. May I ask a question? So I'm curious as how to how you get the uh, precise location data of the tweets, because um, the I think the users uh, share their location if they um, consent to that, like you know, like place here I check in yep. here and stuff. So. If the user doesn't share their location, do you still uh, do, could you still get the data and tweets and stuff? Okay, so um, the, the 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 map I showed today is um, we uh, that's based on the GPS. Template. You know, some people.